Well, welcome back, Heather, Rodine, and Becky Baxter. Uh, we were together on Friday having a great chat about being moms. You know, we're going to get talking here about your book, this amazing book, Appointed. I'm very excited to get into it, but how are you, how are you two managing as moms in this pandemic? Heather, what's it been like for you? Well, we um, actually have done really well. We have probably talked to the kids or seen them almost as much as normal because we all kind of do baking and do little porch drops and wave through the door, wave through the window. But we also have a hundred acres and the kids with dogs will bring their dogs to run the field. And we get to talk over the fence or talk over off the, the back deck and um, see the grandkids. Sometimes they come just to jump on the jump on the trampoline. And so we've actually nice. kind of been able to keep in close touch. And we also keep a running family thread on uh, text messaging. And that's always just a lot of fun and a lot of memes and a lot of, you know, jokes. But it's really nice to just keep, be able to have that technology to take, uh, keep in touch. Yeah. So. Technology has been our friend. Becky, are you surviving over there with four little boys in that house? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this feels like um, stay-at-home mom extreme sport edition. Um, <laughs> we're getting through. I think uh, we're figuring out the online school and really a whole new routine for what it looks yeah. like at home. But um, the new weather, like the warm weather is very welcome. So that definitely yeah, helps. For sure. Yeah. Well, you two have teamed up to write this amazing book, and I love it. It's a journaling devotional book, 31 Days to Help Moms of Littles. Heather, you have a large family. You've got six kids and now 13 grandchildren. So you, as you say in the book, survived this season. And Becky, you have four boys under the age of? Eight. Seven? Eight and under. Eight. Eight and Eight. under, yeah. Yep. Wow. Tell me a little bit about not just why you wrote the book together, uh, but Becky, why did you call it Appointed? Well, we wrote it together um, because I had just started kind of putting my experiences to paper and was writing some devotionals for a blog that I had started. And my mom has already been published. She's already written some books. And so we thought if we put our voices together as a mom who's been through it and a mom who's still in it, that maybe we could offer a unique perspective for those who are going through it now. And we called it Appointed because we really felt like um, there's just been a struggle that I've noticed among myself and some of my friends, um, just really feeling equipped to do the job well. I think social media hasn't done us any favors in terms of what we expect it will be like. And so often we get really discouraged and thinking we're not cut out for it. We're not doing as well as somebody else. And so the whole idea around it's appointed is that we wanted moms to know that they have been appointed by God for the children they have for a reason, for a purpose, in this time for a purpose, and that when God appoints us to something, he is going to equip us for it. So that was really the whole idea around why we picked that title. Well, that's great. And uh, there's a lot that you cover in this book. I've read it. I'm so encouraged by it. I laugh because you're both great writers and great storytellers and very yeah. honest. And I shed a few tears thinking about, obviously, uh, some of the special touching moments you shared, but also as a mom relating so well. And Heather, I'll go to you first. You talk about the power of prayer. Now, you've parented for a long time. You have six kids. They're now all married. You have 13 grandchildren. You've seen a lot, Heather. And prayer, you talk about a time where actually you were woken up in a dream to pray for Becky. Can you talk to us about the importance and the power of prayer and our role to pray as moms? That, that to me is probably the mom's most important role. I mean, we do so many things and we're called to do so many things, but tapping into that power of prayer it's just like sitting on our father's knee and asking him for help and, and coming before God with our treasures on earth. So that, that has always been important to me in my life. And I actually was raised in a really rich Christian inherit, heritage that I learned to pray at a very young age. And I knew that people were praying over me and for me. And I, 
I learned to believe that those prayers sat before the Father long after the people that had prayed them were gone. Yeah. So prayer for me was day one. I prayed for our kids before they were born and pretty much every day since. But this one um, time you're talking about, that was a different kind of prayer. That's intercessory prayer. And I had had a dream in the night and woke up and remembered every detail. And it was a terrifying dream. And it was a dream of Becky, who had been driving home at night in her car, and the car stopped, and she pulled over the side of the road, and she got out and started walking in the dark, and a truck came by and stopped, and she got in, and it drove away. And it was just that feeling that I would never see her again. And I woke up sweating, and with that pressing in it wasn't really a terror but there was a pressing in to pray uh when you do not ignore so i jumped up and ran to her room to look she should have been in her bed and she wasn't there so i called a friend who i knew that um she had just been there and so she said no she left hours ago she should be home by now and so i began that intercessory prayer it's a powerful prayer that um, is always, it always kind of ushers you into the front throne before the throne of God in a way that isn't like just our, your usual normal daily prayers. And there's, mm -hmm. there's an urgency to it. And it's always for someone else. It's not a personal right. prayer. And, it's for someone else. And we know that Becky did come home safe, but she had experienced a very similar thing yeah. being on the road or car. Now, you know what I appreciated, Heather, about you sharing that story is we can often choose worry and fear over prayer. And you went, leaned into prayer. And I think that's a, I know myself in situations like that too, we can, we can let the fear and worry build up, but we must resort to prayer. It's our greatest tool, isn't it? Because there's so many things we're out of control as, my, as parents. Right. And the miracle, I think, from that story that has never left me was that Becky had actually experienced every single thing I saw in my dream. And the but when the truck pulled over to stop, it suddenly took off again. And another mother and daughter came, swung around and came back and picked her up and drove her home. Yeah. Becky was totally unaware of any danger. But when I heard that how God had sent an angel and yeah. just taken out of that situation. We can trust so. God with our kids, can't we? That's so good. Becky, you share yeah. very candidly how you struggled with being a, a stay-home mom and having a now of four boys. Not everyone would want to sign up for that one. How did you <laughs> make the shift in your perspective of your role and value as a mom? Yeah, it started when my first two were only about 13 months apart. So my first two boys were very close. And when they were about one and two, um, I just found myself really struggling. And it was the season that I thought would bring me the most joy. And yet I found I was really lacking it. And I mean, my mom made it look so easy. So I thought, how hard can this be? But surely I just found it, um, I just was struggling. And so I knew God had asked me to be a stay-at-home mom. And I'm not saying that all moms are called to be stay-at-home moms. But for me, that was clear. And um, I really started to fight it. And I asked God, like, please, like, can I rejoin the workforce? It would just be so nice to get a break. And I felt him say, no, you need to stay where you are. And so that kind of began a journey for me. I remember standing in my sister-in-law Irene's kitchen saying, I just need my joy back. Like, it's missing. And I knew I was missing that and where it needed to come from. And so that was kind of the beginning of really surrendering my desires. I was at this cross point of what I wanted versus what I knew God wanted for me. And so choosing that, um, even though things might not get easier, I needed to do what God had asked me to do. And sure enough, over the next couple of years, I mean, my circumstances didn't change. I had two more little boys to add to the family. And, uh, but my heart definitely shifted. My heart changed and God really restored joy to me. And, um, yeah, the day to day is tough. Like we have our moments, but I really have felt the joy restored to my heart. And I think that's because of that season of pursuing God more than what I wanted to do. 
Well, I think you both really summarized well why it's called Appointed. I love that you take people on a journey. You let them reflect and you give them a prayer when you don't know what to pray. Just read the prayer, right? And in a sense, this is a survival guide that makes you thrive. I think many people will really gain some great encouragement. Where can they find your book, Heather? Um, Becky, you want to cover that one? We, um, sure. Becky knows where I'm going. Yeah. Yes, you can go to appointeddevotional.com and you can order your book right there. Well, I encourage our viewers to do that. We only touched on you know, really two of 31 topics that are covered in this book, but I know you'll find it encouraging to you for the moms in your life, for the people who, you know, have blessed you get this book today. Thank you, Heather and Becky, for sharing your hearts with us, for sharing your encouragement and cheering you on as moms. We'll be right back.